thousand. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, those eco nuts. Uh, I think the latest incarnation, Extinction Rebellion, Insulate Britain, and uh, now uh, with their talent for snappy names, they're calling themselves Just Stop Oil. Uh, today uh, they staged a. De- demonstration outside of uh, Lloyd's of London, the financial institution uh, in charge of insurance, uh, an absolutely uh, vital cog in the financial wheels of the world, and not only this nation. Anyway, their demonstration caused Lloyd's of London to close. Uh, They've been uh, picketing oil refineries with the result that people can't get fuel hospitals can't get oil and on and on they go so we understand so this week the government said they will not tolerate any more of these demonstrations that cause havoc in decent honest citizens lives they will not tolerate it so they're going to draw up some injunctions to stop these eco nuts causing this ongoing chaos why do they have to keep getting injunctions out I mean, if somebody robs a bank and they get arrested, you don't have to get an injunction out to arrest them. Or if someone's caught shoplifting, you don't have to get an injunction out to convict them. Why, when it's these eco-nuts staging these stupid demonstrations where they glue their hands to the road, uh, go down pipes and tunnels in refineries, uh, you know, or, or, or just block uh, motorways. What, why do they have to get injunctions out to prosecute uh, them and send, and in some cases, send them to jail? So they're doing it again. So it doesn't sound to me as if the government's all that determined. Uh, let's talk to a political commentator, and he's also the UK lead in the Young Voices organisation, Jason Reed. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Yes, uh, am I missing something? If you go and uh, call, block the highways outside a refinery, if you climb into uh, private property uh, and uh, stop that refinery going about its legal business, you know, that is against the law. That is restricting other people's right uh, to lead their lives in a legal way. That's against the law, just as it's against the law to block roads or to glue your hands to other people's property. So why, uh, in the case of these eco-demonstrators, Insulate Britain, Extinction Rebellion, now Just Stop Oil, do the police need to take out injunctions in order to uh, prosecute these people? It's very, very bizarre. As far as I can see, there is no reason to treat them differently to the way we treat everybody else. I can guarantee you, if you or I picked one of our favourite political issues and tried to glue ourselves to the road in protest, we would be carted away and arrested and charged, and quite rightly so. But for some reason, with the environmental protests, they are treated differently. They've quite clearly broken the law by gluing themselves to the road, by chaining themselves to private buildings. This particular Lloyds of London attack today, it was quite strategic. They blocked off all eight entrances to that building so that nobody could could get in and go to work. Uh, But for some reason, when they're arrested, they're then released without charge. And that's if they're arrested in the first place. It's very, very strange. It's not clear at all why the police are doing it this way and why we need injunctions. I think they just need to put their foot down a little bit. And if you're going to break the law and inconvenience other people's lives, well, then you're going to have to feel the full weight of the law uh, and face all the consequences of that, I'm afraid. There's no easy way out of it. Do you remember uh, during the Insulate Britain uh, demonstrations, Uh, when uh, there was that copper, female copper, uh, filmed uh, talking to the people who glued themselves to the M25, I think it was, uh, an approach road, so blocking all the traffic, causing chaos everywhere. Copper turns up and says, is everyone all right? Is there anything (laughs) I can get you? Uh, Because we don't want you to be in any discomfort. Do let me know. Just trying to be nice. Uh, (laughs) The police were not as nice to anti-lockdown, anti-vax demonstrators in London, were they? They were not. It's very bizarre, this attitude that the police have. There was one case of uh, when one of these clowns glued themselves to the ground, there was some bargaining going on with the police where the protesters agreed to give up their bottle of glue in exchange for some water that the police provided for them, which, I mean, that raises many questions. First of all, did they not bring any water with them? <laughs> or did they not think of that when they were going to glue themselves to the road? Secondly, why are we bargaining with them? Why are we doing this exchange of goods going on you've got to you know just arrest them take them to the police station and and charge them it's as simple as that uh, this Lloyds of London protest today is, is particularly remarkable. Lloyds of London, as you said, are involved 
in insurance. And so what the protesters are saying is that it's wrong that they are insuring projects related to fossil fuels. So if we think about that for a minute, are we saying that petrol stations should not be insured? And if a petrol station blows up and, and some people die, that the families of those people should have no recompense in the law and should not get any compensation? It doesn't make any sense at all. They've not thought it through. They've not thought beyond their headline of just stop oil. They came up with those three words and they plastered that across all their social media. And that's it. That's all the thinking they've done. The rest of their energy is, goes into gluing themselves to the road and chaining themselves up. And also, uh, don't forget the Just Stop Oil demonstrations outside refineries around the country uh, have caused oil shortages uh, that have caused many motorists to have to drive 50 miles to find petrol. So that's one aspect uh, that is disconcerting. But uh, worse than that, hospitals were deprived of their energy sources. Now, so these are serious crimes and they should be taken serious, seriously. The police, or if this is their attitude, uh, it should not be, oh, these people are demonstrating about a really good cause and therefore they get special treatment because that's the impression that I believe people like you and me, uh, Jason, get that, that, that these people are middle class, tend to be white, uh, quite well to do, lots of them, uh, and the police treat them as if they're, you know, solid campaigners for a good cause and therefore we mustn't be too nasty about them. Well, they're stopping hospitals get their power source. Uh, they should not get this modly coddling treatment. These protesters are showing a complete disregard for the law and a complete disregard for people trying to go about their lives, even if those people are trying to run a hospital and trying to do good things in the world. It's just an ego trip for them. Most of the time they spend filming themselves, talking into the camera about how valiant they are. They're doing photo shoots. There was one of them uh, did a photo shoot with a, a letter outside the gates of Downing Street. There was another guy who's a priest who sewed his lips shut as some kind of statement about how the realities of climate change are being shut down in the media. I don't know what media he's listening to, but I hear nothing else about the how vital uh, it is that we you know, stop everything in order to fight climate change. Some of them say um, that, of course, the, it's not as simple as just stopping oil. And what they're really saying quite reasonably is, oh, we need to stop investing in new oil projects and new oil refineries. But if you drill down into that, it's not as reasonable as it seems. And the protesters on the street don't seem to have got the memo. Because if you listen to, for example, the priest who's sewn his mouth shut, well, you can't listen to him right now because he's got his lips sewn shut. But when he's able ah. to speak again, he'll tell you all about how they want to just stop the flow of oil. All of them have been very clear. They want to stop the flow of oil. That's not mince words. What does that actually mean? What that means is stopping the flow of electricity into people's houses. It means stopping the flow of petrol into people's cars. It means bringing 21st century Britain to a grinding halt. They want to undo centuries of technological progress. They want to undo the industrial revolution. They want to go back to a time where we all live in mud huts and we have this agrarian society and we all have to farm our food. And if there's a bad harvest, we all starve to death. It cannot be overstated just how ludicrous this perspective is. And against that backdrop, it's even more crazy that the police seem to be taking some kind of a light touch to them. Yeah, it is so regressive. Uh, now, Essex Police, uh, where the refineries are, uh, have made 373 arrests in the past 12 days. And here comes uh, the drum roll statement with <laughs> no charges. Uh, and go. only 11 of them remain in custody uh, amid a revolving door of activists being arrested and then released to cause more havoc, uh, with some filling stations now drying up ahead of the Easter getaway. So they uh, arrest these people and just let them go. I mean, it's not good enough. The police, just like the uh, Just Stop Oil protesters, it seems they can't see beyond the immediate. They can't plan for the future because they've been very open. And it was the same with Extinction Rebellion and with Insulate Britain. They're very open about the fact that they don't have any respect for the police arresting them. And if, you, if they're released, they will just go and do themselves do the same thing again. They won't even go home for a change of clothes. They're just going to go and glue themselves to the road and chain themselves to fences all over again. And so it's hardly a surprise that when we arrest 300 and however many people and then release them all without charge that suddenly we haven't solved the problem because they go and stage a new round of protests and disrupt people's lives all over again this problem is not going to go away 
until the police put their foot down and make it clear that you cannot disrespect the law like this and disrespect other people and upend people's lives without suffering the consequences. Yeah, we don't, we don't need this ridiculous injunction process. You don't need to take out injunctions against people in order to prosecute them because they've broken the law. You just prosecute them because they've broken the law. And if the government says we will not tolerate these uh, chaos-causing demonstrations because uh, they are disrupting decent, honest and citizens' lives then uh, they've got to not tolerate it. But they are tolerating it. Once again, it's a three-card trick from this government. So uh, it's not acceptable, and everyone has to raise their game. Uh, good to talk to you, as always, Jason. Thanks for your time. That's Jason Reid, political commentator, and the UK lead voice, uh, the UK lead at Young Voices. And when we come...